So a lot of new ships were just announced on the World of Warships live stream, and today we're taking a look at the dev blog. There are some very, very interesting things here. First, of course, it is the Japanese light cruisers. So essentially, think of this as a line of the 155 Mogamis, right? So at tier five, you're gonna have a light cruiser variant of an Aoba or Furutaka, that kind of thing. You have a smaller gun caliber, but of course, that means that you're going to have a, an increased fire rate. Generally, according to Wargaming, this, or at least the stream, this line is going to have a lot of guns with really good range, decent firing angles, and good long-range torpedoes. Like we saw on the British battle cruisers, we're also going to see the wiggling torps. Um, where they can maneuver after being launched from the ship. This will give the Japanese light cruisers better turret angles. Of course, that is one of the issues with the Japanese heavy cruisers. They don't have the best torpedo angles on all of those ships. Of course, there's ships like Otago that are a bit of an exception. Uh, but here, we're going to have that wiggle effect after launching the torps, allowing them to have better firing angles. Now, as we look down the line, we see at Tier 5, the Agano. It looks very much like a Furutaka with smaller guns. I think that as this line progresses up the tiers, the number of guns gets to be pretty insane. I'm a little bit scared of these, not gonna lie. As a battleship player, uh, yeah, the fire chance and the potential of these ships is just unbelievable, especially given the range. Keep in mind though, that as the range increases, that things like shell drag and shell weight come into effect, more than just the shell velocity, right? That only measures what the shell exits the gun as. At longer ranges, it really comes down to those other things like drag and that. So lighter shells means that even though these ships have good range as we go up the tiers, they, uh, well, I'm sure the velocity is going to be a bit of an issue. So as we're moving up the tiers here, pretty standard stuff that we would expect to see at tier six and tier seven. These are just iterations on mid-tier cruisers that as we approach the Mogami, right? As far as the tier eight is concerned, it's a 155 Mogami in a bit of a different skin by the looks of things. Pretty typical 15 guns. We're probably gonna expect a bit of a longer reload, much like the Mogami, but a great fire starter. Of course, with this line, we do have to consider that turret angles are going to be an issue or potentially a good thing here. Some of these ships have the potential to have some really good uh, gun angles, and that's going to play a huge factor in the viability of these ships in mid-range and in open water maps, that kind of thing, where it can't just sit behind an island. So as we're moving up into the Tier 9 and Tier 10, Something you should know about is the hit points. The tier nine starts to get a 49,500 hit points. Tier 10 will get up to 55,000. So decent amount of HP here. And the range is looking at that 18, 18.7 kilometers of range. So really, really solid range. And of course, 15 guns still on the tier nine. We're gonna get a heal coming up as far as tier nine cruisers are concerned. No radars or anything crazy like that, but that's pretty standard of Japanese cruisers. I think the real scary thing here is the potential for damage farming. If you're a battleship, I mean, 18 kilometers of range, 15 150 millimeter guns, good accuracy. Yikes. This stuff, this stuff is definitely terrifying. As far as the torpedoes too, I should mention, these start to get some pretty good range. Tier 9, we're having 15 kilometer range torps that do nearly 24,000 damage. But 15 to 57 knots, so they're slow. But that's, that's a very painful random torp that I'm sure I'm going to eat eventually. I'm going to be pretty upset. And as we're moving through, the speeds are really, really quite good here. 34 and a half knots at tier 9. And they're all reasonably fast light cruisers. And yeah, the tier 10, yeah, this thing looks pretty nuts. 18 guns, 18 150 millimeter guns. Oh my goodness, 18 kilometers of range. I mean, only 11% fire, only 11% fire chance, but 18 guns. And of course, because it's a Japanese cruiser, it's going to have some pretty solid accuracy as well. So that is 
almost guaranteed to light fires. I can't even imagine not getting a fire with with 18 guns. That is unreal. So definitely keep an, your eye out for more information on these Japanese light cruisers. This is just the preliminary information from the dev blog. They also announced a new German tier 9 cruiser, one that seemingly is focused on secondaries. Yeah, yeah, secondary cruisers aren't a thing right now. <laughs> But we'll take a look. 60 second fire duration, no fire prevention. Okay, 3x 350 millimeter guns at eight kilometers of range for your secondaries alongside the 10x2 128. So a lot of secondary guns, but again, you can't spec them. There's just no upgrades anymore for, for cruisers to spec into secondaries or tanking skills really like fire prevention. So I can't really see this being all that amazing unless the main guns are really good, and this just happens to be a bonus. But typically when Wargaming adds secondaries to ships, they nerf a lot of the main gun characteristics, and the ship becomes very situational, and over a broad range of games is gonna be worse overall, just because it has the secondary gimmick than if it didn't have the secondaries at all and was given more powerful main armaments or normal boost to other aspects of the ship. At least here we are getting an interesting engine boost, 15% uh, engine boost, that's pretty powerful. Uh, there's some potential Georgia running at people aspects to this ship where you can just charge people down really quickly with the secondaries and you do have a hydro and a repair because you're a tier nine, right? So it could be good. I'll definitely be interested to play it, but uh, Maybe it'll be viable with secondaries simply because of the volume of secondaries, not necessarily due to their accuracy, uh, but we'll see. It looks, it looks interesting, but again, I'm not the most interested in secondaries anymore because they feel like bait to me. They're just a gimmick that tends to not function very well at all, and I'm usually better off just focusing on my main guns. And yes, of course, on to the super ships. So we're getting the Super Hakuryu, and well... I'm not really going to talk about that. It's a super carrier. It's going to be OP. We all know that. Moving on to the more interesting one, though, the Super Kremlin. An absolute ton of HP. 135,300 HP. You're getting the same 457 millimeter guns, a little more range, 21.3 kilometers this time, which is nice, but... No 32 millimeter overmatch here as well. I think that's good. Probably added a little too much 32 millimeter overmatch recently, in my opinion. Uh, so that's nice to see. Similar 33 second reload time. The dispersion is going to be bad, but of course you do gain the special gimmick here. Unlike the Patri, we are having a combat instruction where you get 30% better dispersion, 10% better firing range, for 25 seconds, so one salvo. And the required number of shots is up to nine. So you're not gonna have it very often, but 30% dispersion is pretty nasty. And of course, 457 millimeter guns, while they're not gonna be all that painful for angled battleships, 457s hurt cruisers bad. So I can see this thing being absolutely insane as a tank and sometimes an accurate sniper. Uh, on to the gimmick of this ship. You get Smolensk secondaries, yeah. And realistically, that's just going to come down to if they have any turret health, right? The problem with Kremlin's secondary build really isn't the secondaries themselves or how accurate or how much damage they do. It's that the turrets just get permanently destroyed the instant anyone just looks at you. Uh, so whether or not this secondary gimmick on the Super Kremlin will work or not really does, in my opinion, come down to the turret HP. But other than that, it is a Kremlin. It's got a fast acting damage control and a repair party, and that's it. They don't really say the number of consumables. I would assume it's the typical one less um, heal compared to standard battleship number of heals. So that's the dev blog. You can go check it out now if you want more information. There's a lot of details there that I kind of glossed over, but I wanted to talk about some of these new ships coming into the game because it's pretty exciting. It's interesting to see where the game is going. And of course, seeing new lines and new different ships coming into the game, 
well, we're going to get early access to these Japanese cruisers at some point, right? That's how all these new lines come into the game. I wouldn't be surprised if after the early access of the British battleships is done, that we'll just roll right into Japanese light cruisers. I don't know. Keep in mind, all this information is coming directly from the dev blog. That is all I've got so far. So let me know what you think of these new ships in the comments down below. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.